Hey groups, good to see you guys all again. I hope you've been enjoying your winter so far. Um, we are continuing in our series on distinct and how we've looked at the people of God, the people of Israel are meant to be a distinct group of people. Um, and this past week, Eric spoke on this idea of provision and how God continues to provide for his people. And, uh, the way the message came together this past week actually kind of looked at Maslow's higher, hierarchy. Hi, I can say that right. Hierarchy, right? Hierarchy of needs. And it's so interesting how science actually pointed to the very things that God created through the Bible. And we see it um, spoken out um, in many of the passages we looked at over the course of this weekend. So in that hierarchy of needs, it's air, water, food, shelter, safety, sleep, and clothing in some cases. And what I just love, um, I'm going to speak specifically on the air one. Uh, what, what was so interesting to hear in this week's teaching is that anytime we breathe, like we are almost speaking the name of God. I would, I would argue that we are speaking the name of God, Yahweh, right? That, that is in scripture. And I love that from the moment we're born to the last thing that we do, we're speaking the name of God. Um, and it's just so interesting how God has continued to provide for the needs of his people, the people he's called to be a distinct group of people all the way up till now and how that relates to our lives. So as you guys have conversations today, I'm excited to see and hear um, how, how God has provided for you and how he's been that provider in your life. Um, Kids, if you're in the room, we've got some kids' questions that are, let's see here, I believe they're on the back here. Yep, kids' questions on the back of the sheet. Leaders, you can walk them through this. Um, and if you guys ever want, these are always in the airlock. We print a few hard copies off if you want to grab one. Otherwise, they're always online as well. So kids, if you want to jump into your questions, adults will come back to you here shortly. Alrighty, adults, question number one, and we always go back to the challenge, so don't skip this one, but remember back to last week, and I think what we do always want to challenge you to remember last week because tr that's where transformation happens, right? If we're just having conversations in our group and not actually applying it after, uh, we're, we're not doing anything. So make sure to ask yourselves these questions. Do you remember the challenge from last week? It was to reflect on how God has delivered you and what God has delivered you from. Um, if you spent time uh, reflecting on that, what, what did that look like in your life this past week? All right, for these next few questions, um, we're gonna have you read a section of scripture and then talk about these questions. So the first one that you're gonna read is from Exodus 14, five through 14. All right, the questions that come out of this are, what stands out to you in this passage? Uh, now reread verses 29 through 31 and see how did God save the Israelites. So be very specific. How did God save the Israelites in this passage? And then take a minute and imagine yourself in this scene. What would this scene look like for you? All right, question number three. We're going to take it one step further. Exodus 16, 11 through 31. Read that and then we'll ask the questions. All right, question number one in this. What happened to the people who tried to take more manna than was allowed? Part A. Part B, what happened to the people who did not take enough manna as they were preparing for the Sabbath? And what does each of these disobediences show us about people? What do they show us about people?
All right, for question number four, I want you to start by reading Exodus 17, verses one through seven. All right, now in the question for number four, what do you notice about this passage and uh, what can you learn about God and about his people from reading this story? All right, number five. During the worship services over the course of this weekend, whether you watched online or you were present in the service Sunday or Monday, um, Pastor Eric spoke on this idea of balance and that balance may be key to being distinct in this world. So balance is key to being distinct in this world. Uh, where in these stories do you see this idea of being in balance? Um, and where in your life do you see areas for growth? in this idea of balance? And how does um, a balance of work and rest show that you trust in God's provision? All right, number six, and this is the challenge for this week. Ask God to show you areas in your life where you need to find balance and be willing to change your lifestyle to better reflect God's intentions for balance. I think that is so important to not look at our idea of balance or what culture thinks balance should be like in our life. Look to the Bible, look to God's intentions for what balance should be and reflect those things in your way of life. Um, if you got time uh, for our Digging Deeper section, uh, check it out. Otherwise, I hope you guys all have a great week. We'll jump into Digging Deeper in just a few minutes here. All right, if you got time and you're ready to jump into digging deeper, um, it is on that back page of the group's questions. And I think it's super interesting this week. Uh, it specifically looks at what it means to work and to work hard. And there, I think as, as Americans and as people who are living in a busy culture and a busy world, there's always something more you can do. There is always something that you can take it up an octave and like we can always work, right? There's always hours we can put in. And the question comes like, at what cost? And how much is too much? And there's a moment in scripture in Mark um, that really speaks to this where they ask Jesus, like, hey, Jesus, there's people who still need to be healed and there's more work to be done. What do we do? Um, and Jesus speaks through his actions in these verses. And I hope you get a chance to jump through that. Uh, take a look at that on the back. Um, hey, and after you do that, have a great week. So excited to be continuing to be in the word of God with you guys. And I hope this material has been rich in conversation for you. Have a great week.